So um, simple harmonic oscillation can be as simple as a mass on a spring. That kind of a familiar type of motion that people are used to seeing. And um, that's basically what simple harmonic oscillator motion is. I think we covered something called the Hooke's law when we were talking about energy. So Hooke's law, you have that whenever you have an object, there's a, something called the restoring force. When you displace this object away from equilibrium, then there's a force. Um, and I don't have any force. Graph, never mind. Then there's a force that tends to push it back. So when I let go here, the force pushes it down. And when I let go of it below the equilibrium point, then force pushes it up. So it's uh, as simple as that. And um, here's something I want to demonstrate with this simple harmonic oscillator motion. And so I guess it starts off with this question which is sort of a half a metrical question. So you see half metrical because I <laughs> force people to answer on this question. Um, so you see how quickly this mass is moving down and up or up and down, up and down, up and down. Can I make it more slow? Oh, here it is slow. Oh, that's so slow. Right, that's fine, it gives me more speaking time. So you see how quickly it's moving up then down, let me do a resting position so that I can use it. So up, then down, and back, go. So that's the uh, oscillation motion. And you can see how quickly that happens, up and um, one whole cycle. So this up and down, this repeating smallest unit of that, we call that cycle. And how long that motion takes, we call that a period. So if I make it run slower, then I can actually measure a period with it. And this crosses here, I'll let it start running. And when it comes back to the exact same point, moving in the exact same way, I'll stop it. So here, the period was 0.86 seconds. And that kind of feels about right. As you move it, see it, move it up and down. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, it's about a second and I measured it more precisely here. So here's a question, which uh, you're welcome to answer, but we can also treat this rhetorical question. Um, how do you think this period is affected if uh, I make it this mass move in a larger range of motion? So you see the range of motion here, let's say I double it. I uh, pull it way down here and make it move double the distance. And would it move just as fast, slower, or faster? By slower, I mean, would it take longer time for this to move back and forth? And so, so yeah. So let me just give you a little bit of time to think about it. You are welcome to answer it if you want to. You don't have to answer it. And as you're thinking about it, you know, if you're intuitively guessing it, you can really go many different ways. Maybe because the distance is longer, you think it should take a longer amount of time. But when you actually let it move, let me make it move with a normal uh, speed. When you actually let it move, so see how fast this was going versus how fast this was going. It's moving faster in the middle. And it kind of makes sense. It, um, with the, uh, uh, the energy in mind, that with the more stretching, there's a more potential energy, so it will have more kinetic energy here, so it makes sense it moves faster. So does it actually take less time? It, uh, um, it, you can kind of go either, either way. There's an intuitively thinking about it, it's a hard type of one clear answer. So let's uh, do a measurement. I'm gonna just pull it about double, double the distance, and then I'm going to let go, and I'll just let it go back and forth one time. And then the second time it's going back and forth, I'll measure it. So as it moves up, start here, and then it'll move down, and then it moves up, I'll stop it. Yeah. It's 0.88 seconds. So counting for my reaction time, it's about the same amount of time, same amount of period. 
And this is a characteristic feature of simple harmonic oscillator motion. Those two things I was talking about, how it's moving a longer distance, so it might take longer, and the, that it's moving faster, so it might take shorter. Those two effects just happen to cancel out in such a way that this moves back and forth in the exact same amount of time. And uh, with the mass on a spring, really to change the period, you can't change the period by changing the amplitude. It can be moving a lot, or it can be moving very small amount. Either way, the period will be the same. The only way you can, well, not the only way. Uh, there are only two ways to change the period. One is you can change the spring strength. If you have a stronger spring, stiffer spring, then it will oscillate back and forth faster. So there's one. And the other way you can change how quickly this oscillates back and forth, as you will read about in the chapter, is by changing the mass. That's why these are mystery masses. Um, you can measure the mass here by looking at this oscillation period. Okay, so, so that's one. Now, as you look at simple harmonic oscillators, they are more universal than just the mass on the spring, which is why we do it. And one good example of simple harmonic oscillator that's kind of common in everyday life is pendulum. So, um, do I want the lab or intro? Let me go lab as one position. So, I think everyone here has seen some kind of pendulum, like a grandfather clock. And um, uh, it turns out you can model a pendulum as a simple harmonic oscillator. Um, so let's see if what I was saying about simple harmonic oscillator is true. That uh, the period here doesn't depend on how large this amplitude is. So let me pull out, where's the clock? Um, All right, let's try that. I don't know how this one works. Um, does it just keep on running or? Okay, just times one period. Good, I guess it's easier. Okay, so we did this. Here it is right now, 1.68 seconds. More precise than me trying to find it. Okay, 1.68 seconds, that sounds good. Uh, so let's try changing the amplitude and see if the period stays the same. Uh, maybe double the amplitude. Close to double. All right, let's find the period. And, hmm. Close to 1.68 seconds, but it's not quite 1.68 seconds. It has this little 0.056 seconds of test. <laughs> um, now, if I were measuring it myself, uh, then I would chop that up to reaction time because uh, it takes time for me to click and I, uh, um, there's a human error there. Um, now, this is a simulation. This ought to have been exactly correct. And if you play with this, you will actually see that with a very large amplitude, what I was saying about a simple harmonic oscillator doesn't quite hold true with a pendulum. So with this very large amplitude, you can see the period is definitely changing. So uh, pendulum is a kind of an approximate simple harmonic oscillator. As long as I'm in this range, very small oscillations, then it can be treated like a simple harmonic oscillator. The period doesn't depend much on the amplitude. But as you make the amplitude larger, then it becomes enharmonic. It becomes no longer harmonic. And um, so this is the way in which a lot of the physical phenomena are, um, uh, the physical, uh, simple harmonic oscillator is a universal in physical phenomena. As in, so this, is this pendulum, it's not actually simple harmonic oscillator in the most general sense. But when you can approximate it, when you can approximate it as a small oscillation around the equilibrium, then you can treat it like a simple harmonic oscillator. And many other phenomena, like molecules vibrating, that can be approximated as a simple harmonic oscillator in a similar way. It's, uh, uh, when you take calculus, you can kind of prove them mathematically. So that's a bit about oscillators, uh, oscillation, simple harmonic oscillator, that uh, the truth.
true, simple harmonic oscillators have a p oscillation period that's independent of amplitude, and that that particular feature as an approximation is much more universal than just the mass on a spin.